Hello everybody and welcome back to Warpleville. Monday Night Madness. We're going to continue the madness with these big gigantic trolls here from our imprintable terrain. If you remember, on the big Saturday show, we did this guy right here. The woodland troll, or forest troll, whatever you want to call him. I think we'll just name him Woody or something like that. So there's three of these. There's also the fungus troll. We have, uh, we actually have him here. I should get him a little bit closer. So we will be painting uh, this guy here at some point. We'll just keep him close at hand. But we did this one on Saturday. You can go back and watch that session. We're just kind of waiting for this thing to cure up as we welcome in our moderate armored wolf. How are you? Well, <laughs> I know how you are. Hopefully tomorrow and the next day and the next day are going to be just a little bit more fun. Stone Troll right here. Color-wise, ah, I don't know. We got reference over here. We got a reference over there. I got other references sitting around. We might just be bopping around paint here until we decide on something. Because, well, that's what oils will let you do. You don't have to just decide on something. I do see one little support here. And I'm just going to snip out of here real quick like... There we go. And I think that, well, we might find one or two more of those. I mean, it's a pretty big dude after all. I did just throw some quick acrylic stuff here, just, just some brown on this base so that I could at least hold on to this and not get paint all over the place, meaning me, which would then get all over all the other miniatures. One thing I was contemplating is just not doing too much in the way of greens because, well... We have plenty of greens here. And on the mushroom fungus guy, I'm thinking maybe a little bit more of a brownish tan tone on that one. So this one I'm thinking more of a grays, purple grays. I mean, he's a stone troll. Also thinking of doing some some spot olas on him. I don't know how much you can see down in, in this reference over here. But that guy's got himself some spots. That's a, an interesting pattern, almost like P-Dot camo. And there's enough open areas here that I think maybe we could have some fun with that. The rocks might be more of a warmish gray. This might be more of a coolish gray, maybe even some more teals. Obviously, I don't want to make this look like a river troll, right? Because there's like a banjo troll, a river troll. There's a texting troll. There's like all kinds of different trolls. Like everything has a troll. Actually, it, well, we, we we have plenty of texting trolls, don't we? We also have, look at this, it's like poker chips. We're all in there on our makeup sponges. We got a whole collection of brushes over here. For the most part, we've got our Royal Lang that goes, look at this, beautiful brush in wondrous condition right there. So we'll welcome in Kendon and Ozzy. How are you guys doing? Happy Monday, all that. So this has obviously been uh, used maybe once or twice as a pre-glaze brush. Then we've got our micro filberts, and then we've got our custom-made cut and corners, flats in the filberts. So Ossie, I hope that you're doing well. And Kendon, I hope that your Monday or your week got off to a good start. Hopefully everybody's week's going to get off to a good start. So these are the number six flats that we cut down. We, we might even bring in some bigger ones. Who knows? We also have our, our Dick Blick brushes over here and those Cotman's. Now, palette-wise over here, of course, to your left, my top, is the op row of opaques. You got your Quick Dry White, your Brilliant Yellow Pale, Chamomile Light, Chamomile Deep, Terra Rosa. Along here are the usual suspects of Van Dyke Brown, Indigo, Umber, and Black. We do have a couple of greens down here. Not sure how much of those we're going to use. We got a Prussian blue here. We have ourselves the asphaltum. I do have this purple matter over here. Just throw it out there just for for giggles. Hey, Lumberjack, Tim, how has the Maine... How, how are things in Maine? How, how did that go? And hopefully that was not too much of a pain to get to Maine. Ah, see, that's Wordcraft. You don't... You don't get that kind of wordsmithing just anywhere. And now looking for a place to park in Connecticut. Yeah, I'm guessing there's not really a whole bunch of snow going on. I don't, I don't really, I hadn't heard of any kind of nor'easters or anything crazy like that. So hopefully, relatively mild trip, probably 
probably just regular traffic to deal with. So again, stones, probably something in the warmer gray area here. I'm thinking this, so just some kind of neutral grays. Might even throw a little Egyptian purple out there now and then. Again, don't want it to look like a river troll. And uh, it's, it's been a, a warm, yeah, well, it's it's been 29 here, which is too warm. As far as I'm concerned, it should be more like 18 to 20 degree highs right now. So this is what we did on Saturday. We're still kind of letting that cure for maybe one more day before we throw our varnishes and stuff on there. Now, as far as this our imprintable terrain, I did manage to figure out where the heck one of these sci-fi miniatures was. We painted this on stream. This is on the YouTube channel, so you can go and check this out. There was uh, maybe a little bit of object source lighting and freehand on there. Not, uh, who knows. But we do know that Nessie knows is here. Nessie, how are you doing? Holy smokes, 36 in rain. That is just brutal. That is the worst of all worlds. Uh, let's see, only 50th percent of the way through that vibe. What was that, a seven-hour session? Six and a half, seven hours, something like that? Hey, Adamantium, I I think I did shoot you. I did get you a message back, right? Yes, I think I did. <laughs> or did I? I? I think I did. Now, we got to start doing some pre-glazes on this. And, folks, be sure to give Nessie that follow. Be sure to give Nessie that follow because you're going to get yourself some Song of Ice and Fire. You're going to get yourself some Legion. You get yourself a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Not quite sure what we want to do up in there. Not quite sure. But that's what oils are for, is to just literally start chucking paint around and <laughs> see what the heck happens. Because who cares? Now, Angry Hand, the fungus guy, wasn't quite ready because there was uh, there was some printing errors there. So we had to do some fixing on him. So we're, we had to put the stone troll here in his place. So sorry about that. Now, we do have... Well, here he is. I mean, this is uh, what he looks like right here. But we'll probably be filming him in a video because there's uh, printing errors. Uh, let's just put it this way. The more and more I get printed things from other folks they feel more and more better about my own printing ah, okay that's good I'm glad you got that adamantium and Mr. Fattest Cat of course has to be greeted by the most fashionable cat in the universe this is Prinkles all hail Prinkles worship me there we go there's Prinkles for Mr. Fattest Cat and now we, it, it, it as, uh, as a certain Rohan king is want to say, it begins. How does it begin? I don't care. <laughs> I just got a little bit of indigo here. I got me a little bit of Van Dyke brown. And I don't really care. <laughs> you can see how much I fret over these things. I mean, we really just, well, actually, what I'm going to do is get a few things out of the blast radius though because this here pre-glaze is going to have an area of effect <laughs> it's going to have an area of effect now we're just kind of combining some of our different dark colors huge surprise there i know huge surprise hey rancid vomit welcome back nice to see you again happy monday at least I hope it was. I'm gonna just chuck a little bit of the. We're gonna. We're just gonna start calling that Drax Fulton because it's Drax's fault that we got the S Fulton. So it's Drax Fulton. And we also have Mini Apocalypse. How you doing, Mini Apocalypse? How are you doing? I hope that everybody's weak. Yeah. <laughs> well, who knows. Now, uh, hopefully your your week got off to a decent start, a mellow start. Uh, oh, we got the, uh, the indigo right here. Uh, let's uh, do a little more indigo over here. Why? I don't know. I have no idea why. Like I said, don't know, don't care, doesn't matter. We just sort of freestyle it here. 
let's see, do we, oh, we got galaxies, you cannot, yes, this is the, uh, this here is what we call the pre-glaze. This here is what we call the pre-glaze. I know it was interesting because there was somebody that was looking at one of the recent YouTube videos, and they were talking about having all kinds of problems. Oh, God, well, they were trying to, oh, yeah, glaze oils over existing layers of oils because they wanted to get darks in the crevices. And I said, well, that's, uh, you might want to watch the pre-glaze phase there because that's kind of what that, that's this whole process right here. I mean, we're adding darks, right? I I think we're getting some darks in on this. Uh, you know, I'm actually let a little teensy bit of that burnt umber work its way in there. Why? Again, don't know, don't care. Um, any pocklicks? I'm actually kind of, uh, that there's some ideas that are brewing in this infinitesimally small brain of mine right now. After watching several playthroughs of the War of the Ring board game, I will be asking folks in the chat at random times tonight if they have actually played that themselves or not. But the more I watch that, the more I realize there's some serious potential to do essentially a mashup of War of the Ring and Lord of the Rings, that the Middle Earth strategy battle game where the the board game with all the the event cards, character cards, all that kind of stuff. That is, uh, well, for folks that used to play 40k, and sometimes would do a Battlefleet Gothic game, and then whatever the Battlefleet Gothic game result was, that determined the game of 40k that you would play, or from BFG down to Epic, right? Epic was the 16, 15 millimeter, whatever. Hey, Strooper, how you doing? How are you doing on this Monday? So that is uh, all weekend long, just to try and stay sane because there was lots of hilarity going on here. I just had some of those playthroughs going in the background, and they gave me ideas. As I started watching that, I said, wait a minute. Some of these things would be perfect for a Lord of the Rings, War of the Rings-style campaign. Instead of just like, okay, now the Easterlings just move over here and we roll a dice and yay. These action cards seem to have, it's way more fun than just, oh, look at this, roll on a D6 table. With the same five results every single time. Yay, big deal. So that gave me some serious ideas right there. And now I know there's multiple versions of the game out there. I just, I was thinking, what, do I just get the cheapest most basic one that the the usual game and just use that because I've seen there's a there's more additions I think there's at least two add-ons of some type and if anybody has played those and knows what the contents of those are I'd like to know what I also like to do is start adding oh look at that you can almost see that ah, you can even see that burnt umber right there yes you can so if anybody has uh, experience with that War of the Ring board game, especially with whatever, the expansions or something like that, just uh, if you could kind of give me a hint as to, well, they might add something to it, or, well, they really don't do that much. Because it's less about playing the board game than it is about somehow utilizing those action cards and even the map and other things to make games of Lord of the Rings more interesting. And, by the way, for folks that are coming in hot here, coming in new, this is from RM Printable Terrain. I will get you the other figure that we did on Saturday. You can go back and watch that, of course. We always make all of the former sessions as permanent highlights. So there are highlights, uh, I guess you, I guess you could just call them vods, but uh, they're technically highlights. All right, so he is he's mostly covered. Let's uh, head on over to ye old club over here. Uh, Board of the Ring, a satiric take on Lord of the Rings. Uh, 
Of course, Angry Ham, you know what just popped into my head when you said that? Board of the Ring. It's like the office version of Lord of the Rings. You know, like Iluvatar is, is the big head honcho of the company. And then you got these middle managers and, and stuff like that thinking they're big guys. And then you have your, your ordinary line employees and stuff like that. And then you have the Nazgul. They're sort of like those, uh, they're like the headhunters. The guys that come through looking to fire people and stuff like that. And, and uh, was that Bree or Hobbiton is the break room or something like that? Now that, has anybody ever done something like that? <laughs> that, uh, you just gave me an idea there, Angerham. Board of the Ring. It's, it's, it's the corporate version of Lord of the Rings. So you're trying to hide in your cubicle, right, so that the big boss, uh, Sauron, can't see you? Playing computer games and, and whatever. And then you got crazy hobbits uh, photographing or, or photocopying body parts in the in the copy room or something like that. All right, so we are also going to take a little picture of this. We did it on this guy here. Remember, so uh, he's a little bit shorter, but he is a little bit wider. Ah, okay, so I, oh, so it actually is kind of close there. Now, for folks that this is the one I was going to paint today, but there's there's things on this that I have to fix. There were some printing errors on this one, and just some pieces that got broken in the shipping, so we have to fix him up. We will film a video on him, and there's also I see there's more supports to take off. So that's why we're working on this guy right here. However, we are going to take ourselves a quick little picture of this just before we get to our sponging here to complete the pre-glaze process. And you can see what kind of a blast effect this has. Look at some of these sponges here. So these were in the nearby area. You see all those spots right on there? Let's get down to this. We are going to start removing some of this paint here. I got tons of sponges. Well, <laughs> I have a few sponges cut into many pieces. Oh, look, look at this. Look at that. The primer, as always, is just your Badger Steinol Res. Just a kind of collection of neutral, off-white primers, that sort of thing. So for sure, I'm starting to, to just the way that the battles play out, and then there's this idea that, well, you attack one of the territories, and if it is a stronghold or something like that, the defender can go into siege versus just trying to meet you in open field. And then some of those, those uh, event cards, remember we wanted to, well, for the time that maybe we start doing the live streams of it. If the chat, maybe, you know, you could uh, use channel reward points to give an extra action dice or channel reward points to provide an extra uh, event card or something like that. Instead of just affecting the rolls of the dice, I mean, that's just kind of, I don't know, I'd that almost kind of messes up just the game a little bit too much, just affecting dice rolls like that. So I thought this could be more of, it would structure the game as opposed to alter the game. Uh, no, Aussie, I was just cleaning those. <laughs> yeah, I was just cleaning all these brushes right here. Uh, we probably, <laughs> I don't know, we might use one or two of them, but they were just getting clean, so that's why they were out here. Because for, let's put it this way, for every hour that you see me painting on stream, there's two to three times as much painting that goes on here, aside from what you guys see, between the filming and everything else. So let's just say that the, the brushes really get beat up and get dirty. And I just tried to spend a couple of minutes before the stream here 
trying to get those clean outs. So look at look at all the nifty colors we're already starting to get here. Uh, Mr. Fattest Cat, uh, now there are, I think Signum is one of those, and, oh gosh, R R M R N S Studio. Sorry, let me spit that out. They have the physical as well as the digital. So there are several companies out there that have both as an option. And then there are also some where... You could, uh, what is it? Well, even Artisan Guild does this too. They have a manufacturer's license or something like that where let's say you pledge 30 bucks a month or 50 bucks a month or whatever. You can then print the files and sell them on your Etsy as long as you're giving credit to the original guys for the, the sculpt itself. So you, uh, I guess uh, now, of course, <laughs> somebody else printing the files for you, you you kind of get what you get and printing right now Mr. Fattest Cat I, I'd say if you're I would wait on a printer right now because as far as I'm concerned they're still not good enough yet they're not good enough not reliable enough they're, they're closer but I was really gonna be looking into a new printer and now I'm thinking nope I think I might wait another six months I just might wait another six months for a bigger build plate, more reliability, more ease of use. I think I might just wait a little bit longer. So we're, we're getting there as far as what we're removing here. But, I mean, look at all this nifty color. And remember, it basically was just, as far as primer goes, I mean, it was this. It's not just we got darks. We have colors. See that color transition on his arm? See that over here? Yeah, just like our imprint and folks, that is your sculptor right there. So our imprintable terrain. Ask him any questions that you wish. He will be in and out. As we got Quiz and we got Megan somewhere in here, right? Hey, Pixel Cat. So we're we're doing the second of the here we go of the troll. Now we can bring back. So this is Woody right here. That's Woody Saws a log. That is your forest troll right there. And now we're going to have uh, our stone troll right here. Now this, we're going to end up doing the video, or the recorded video on the on the fungus troll over here. So this will be, we'll be doing this in video form because he's a little bit big for just regular streaming here. This kind of fits. See how it's uh, nice and squat and fits the aspect ratio? Oh, thanks, Pixel Cat. And we got Pigeon in your Ambru Baca and Megan. How you doing, Megan? Uh, let's see. So one one thing I was asking folks is have they played the War of the Ring board game and have they used any of the expansions on that? And are the expansions they really offer a lot? I'm not looking to play the game. Well, it looks like a really fun game, but I want to do a mashup with that and the Middle Earth SPG. So essentially use the War of the Ring board game as sort of the controlling mechanism for the overall map and then play out games of Middle Earth SPG according to some of the results on the map and then also utilizing those event cards and special play card, all that kind of stuff. So you can see, look, we got brown over here. That's the indigo over there. That's some of the asphaltum over here. We got the Van Dyke brown over here, right? I think maybe we can take a little bit more away down here. This is why we got lots of sponges, right? Hey, Numbskull, how you doing? Happy Monday. Now, we, I did manage to locate the one, uh, the sci-fi figure. So this is also from our imprintable terrain. And this is on the YouTube channel, so you can go check this one out. So uh, obviously it's a wee bit smaller than our big trolls there. But some folks, they, they went and they saw, oh, wait, there's sci-fi terrain and there's sci-fi stuff. So yes, sci-fi stuff. Yeah, Pigeon, now what we're going to do is we're going to shift on over here to our 
homemade filberts is, right? Let's get some lighter, lighter stuff going on here too. And by lighter, we're literally just going to take some of this lighter color here. Now I am going to grab me a paper towel somewheres, like so. Because I saw them using, and again, they were using here. We got to use a very light touch on them. We don't want that much. That's too much on there. Too much is too much. Ah, uh, that's more like it. Ah, uh, look at that. And I, I saw there was different types of combat. There was combat in the open field. There was the siege style of combat. And the, the stuff for the GW version of the campaign, obviously very simplistic. Just a couple of D6 charts, and that's about it. And obviously no special event things or whatever. And I thought it could be really interesting to have those special events. Look at this. Now it's picking up that pre-glaze right there. Uh, our imprintable train, it pretty much comes down to it. That's that's what we got over here on this side. It usually is things like your umbers, uh, the Van Dyke Brown, the Indigo, but it changes. Obviously, every miniature is different. What, what did we not see here? We didn't see any greens, right? There was no greens. There was no yellows in the pre-glaze. The pre-glaze is not always going to just be darker things stuff like this and of course woody the other woody saw as a log those were really kind of tailor-made for that sort of a pre-glaze but if you got something with a whole bunch of object source lighting or whatever well guess what you're probably not going to do a whole bunch of dark so it, it will definitely depend on the figure itself Yep, we're just taking makeup sponges that have been chopped up into smaller bits and we just take away a bunch of the color because it does two things you get all that dark tone in there which we're going to utilize right now like here like you can see there's way different tone down here than there is up here all we got to do is just start adding some lights to it now but the idea is that it, it cuts down on the amount of paint that's also on the miniature which cuts down your drying time a lot i mean seriously it cuts it down a lot that that's why some folks they're just uh, yeah it's been three days and that miniature's not dry and I thought well that's because you got three days too much paint on there. Hey Drift, happy Monday to you. How's your week off to a good start? All right, back up here now and remember what we were talking about. We we're saying that the the stones up here in general probably gonna make those a warmer gray, so that the rest of him can be a cooler gray. Now, one of, one of the advantages to a digital print right here, can you imagine mold lines running through all of these rocks? Can you imagine that? <laughs> oh, I can imagine it all right. And, and I can imagine being in a room without corners for the rest of my life, too, trying to get rid of those mold lines. So... That's, uh, yes, If unless you want to be in a circular padded room... Sometimes digital printing can actually come to the rescue. Got the Belfira. Yeah, let's see. Both printers are down, needing mainboard replacements. And that is, uh, yep, Belfira. <laughs> you you must have, I I must have summoned you because I was just saying, maybe eight or nine minutes ago that I was just on the verge of really looking to hunt down a printer for myself, a newer, better printer. And I realized, you know what? I should wait another six to eight months and get a much newer, even better printer. Because to me right now, they're just not reliable enough. Too much, too many stories like that. I know one of our commission folks, he bought himself a brand new printer used it twice this this was his second printer by the way and it started leaking on him like after three prints there was resin all over the place it was a brand new one and he didn't do anything to it it was he literally done a couple of prints the same prints he'd done on the other machine which got no leaks 
So yeah, that's just uh sorry to hear about that Valfera. I can only imagine speaking of circular rooms, you're just about ready for one of those. Oh, Adamantium, we're just uh, we're only geez, we're only thirty minutes in. We're practically not even started yet. We're practically not even started, so we shall certainly be here for you. I would imagine when you get back. I'm really looking forward to getting some interesting. Now, of course, it's most maybe most folks don't get so excited about subtle different forms of gray, like I do, but I do. Yeah, we might we might just pop the Egyptian violet out here as well. And remember, there's this reference right down over here. There, there was some interesting markings I thought we could maybe sneak in on some of these guys as well. So we'll see what happens with that. I am just going to... Here. Tiniest touch of green into that. Hey, call me Mecco. Happy Monday. Welcome back. I hope that your weekend finished up well. Or at least well enough that you're ready for another week here. Yeah, Nessie, it's just, it's a. Uh, see, even for me, you've heard me say that the process just got accelerated by by all of the, the circumstances of last year. I wasn't intending on getting a printer last year. Well, I, I didn't actually get one. The, the printers just kind of found their way here because I, that was just for these reasons. When I when I have I see the horror stories and now have experienced the horror stories, and I haven't experienced the worst of it. <laughs> Basically, what I've heard other people say, I've tried to avoid at all costs. But yeah, I've heard all kinds of fun stories from folks that I know that, I mean... They might have two or three printers, just like, just like Velfera. <laughs> that's uh, Velfera. I'm pretty sure just exactly what you're describing. I think that's what he said. Just some kind of microscopic hole, and you know that resin. That resin is just like, oh uh, gosh, what is it? Uh, when you do a water pour, right? That sort of resin. It'll just get. It gets everywhere. Oh, uh, let's see. The almost blue stone trolls. Well, there's the... You know, of course, Armored Wolf, what, what came up when I did an image search? Tons and tons of the old-style GW stone trolls. Not not the new ones. Not none, none of the new GW trolls. All the old stone trolls. Now, I didn't want to do this too blue because if there's ever a river troll or something like that, we, we want to make sure that there's enough uh, turquoise possibilities for a future river troll. Who knows? Maybe there'll be a river troll. Uh, oh, here we go. Because I'm just looking at my references and, well... The other thing that came up was the Reaper Bones Black Rock Troll, I guess is what they call it. Uh, I am glad I bought the brand I did for the resin. Ah, well, I'm, I'm, well, <laughs> I'm glad there's there was some, some small consolation there, or measure of consolation for you there, Velfera. All right. Uh, hmm. We haven't actually messed around with the purple just yet. I'm going to just see if we can throw a little bit of that into here. And this is purple matter, which almost has a kind of a reddishness to it anyway. So, ah, there we go. Get some of that over here, and that's going to be more for our shadow areas. Uh, let's see. Valfara says, I'm glad I bought the brand I did for the res. Oh, okay. Uh, Numskull Brilliant Yellow Pale is out on the palette, as always. 
and that tends to be one of the the colors that we throw out here at the start it's usually never just by itself it usually has a little something else thrown in with it all right uh, why not a little bit more of that that's the purple matter getting a little bit of the terra rosa in there because that's going to make it a little bit more opaque as well there we go just want to make sure there's not too many of these cool colors in here Now see, he's quite cool. He's good. Actually, there was a. I was almost thinking of almost kind of winterizing him a bit. Almost sort of like a bit of a frost troll or something. That was definitely well. You know, if I could do another one of these as a frost troll. I mean, there's nothing that says we just don't do another one of these and we do it as a frost troll. We could do another one of these. We could do him as an amber troll. We we could do what a, a jade troll, right? An amber troll. We could do. We could do this same guy. Uh, probably a whole bunch of different ways, and it would probably be just as fun each way. Let's see. Nessie knows is waiting on resin prints of Bangalorians. Wow, that's very cool. Now, did you get any prints of Dandelorians too? Or Candelorians? Uh, what was that? Oh, yeah, the Willy Wonka version of the Mandalorians. I'm just going to dive in here with some dorks on this. We'll see what we want to do here. Do we want to do any kind of rusting on that, whether it's something like chipping, whatever? We'll see. Or do we do something else there look at his rocky's war room here there's walkie Ro walkie's rocky's war room so rocky how did all the broadcasts go so folks be sure to give rocky's war room a follow because rocky's going to be doing the friday night fights they also do their wednesday uh play game playing games and then they've got their podcast on Saturday. All that is, I believe, 8 o'clock Central Time. So you want to get the notifications for that, then you got to follow Rocky's War Room. Uh, let's see. Now, if somebody asked about the terrain, oh, a Wonkalorian, there you go. That's a, oh, that is very good. So here is and the, there's a whole bunch of terrain videos featuring our imprintable terrain. Not just that big old tower in the center, but also that building that is off to the left-hand side. There's also two fountains. So there's there's a ton of our imprintable terrain already, and we're making more. Actually, there is more here. Let me get to my Easterlings. So there's more. See, see, there's uh, see those small sections right there of kind of a scattered terrain right there that you got out kind of in front here. We have tons of those. We've got statues. Actually, we're going to be trying some of the green stuff world uh, powders on those statue pieces there. I'll catch you later, Lumberjack, Tim. Yeah, uh, well, hopefully we'll catch you on Thursday night when we do our sculpting stream. I guess that the reason our imprintable terrain, I had to paint a whole bunch of river trolls, uh, not just just regular miniatures, but the gosh, with Asgard Rising, yeah, they're what the heck were those armored wolf? You remember what the heck those things were called? Ah, uh, they weren't river trolls; they were fish trolls, <laughs> but they had a lot of fish. They had a lot of fish going on, so. Uh, uh, people really had a blast uh, with us painting those things here on the stream. So that's, I guess that's what got me thinking about River Trolls too. Uh, where's their bears? Uh, respect the umber. Ah, well, where there's a rocky, there's a, there's got to be a not J far behind. So not J, how you doing? How was the broadcast on Saturday? And how was the fighting on Friday? 
It just I wish that I could get a chance to, to catch you guys, but Saturday and Friday, those are pretty much the only days that I can stream here outside of Mondays and then the late Thursdays. Otherwise, I would be, I'd be hanging out with you guys. But folks, you don't have that restriction, so be sure to give them a follow so that you can hang out with Rocky and not Jay. Fjord Trolls. There we go. Oh boy, they lost all five of the pilots in the scenario. That, uh, that sounds painful and hilarious. It sounds quite hilarious to someone who's maybe a bit more sadistic. I think you can start to see how this... Uh, we're starting to migrate some of these colors around. We're, we're starting to get maybe a little bit of a more solid idea of what path we might choose to go with here. Oh, but Rocky's... Go they're going to add a day. They're going to add Sundays to the broadcast. Well, I think you've experimented, right? Because I could swear that uh, while well, Kathy is... Now, her podcast is going. You guys have also been doing a couple of test test Sunday episodes. All right, there. See, now the more red that gets, the, the more blue this gets without having to make that just super blue. We don't want to make that super blue. Let's see, we finished a live unboxing of the... Ah, that's right. Anchors away. Uh, it was the British fleet, right? Yeah. I saw the picture of the British fleet. How many ships come in that? Is like uh, six of them or something like that, maybe? I assume you get something like an Ark Royal, Illustrious, maybe a KGV class uh, battleship or something like that, some destroyers, a cruiser, maybe an Ajax or a Canberra or something like that. You can see that we're also gonna have to get something here do we do we adapt some of the the bring some green over here i don't know uh, just let's just do it let's just do it and see if we like it or not because if we don't like it guess what we got makeup sponges and it goes away i'm just assuming you must have one of the carriers there i'm guessing you don't have like a nelson or a rodney or something like that because I, 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 I just quickly looked at the picture, and it looked like it was maybe a Prince of Wales or King George V on the cover of it. I could swear I saw a quad and a double on top of it, so... And I will just chuck a little touch of that green over here, too. How's about on this side? I mean, it just, just make things interesting. Leather doesn't have to just be brown. It can be more than that. Uh, pigeon, I have used those. Actually, I do have... I, well, I've got a couple of videos on the YouTube channel that shows me using, obviously, the, the Steiner Res Primer, but also the Ghost Tints, which are part of the Minotaur. The Minotaur paints, they do have a tendency to be a little bit on the glossy side. I just use those for terrain, and I typically mix those with primer. So let's let's say I'm running low on dark colored primer. Speaking of darker colors, look at this. I'm taking some of the pre glaze. This is that's why this is your palette, right? This is your palette, and I'm just I'm taking that darker color. I'm literally just moving it around. Look at this. It, it's like I got paint storage or paint just stored here waiting for me to use it. How cool is that? Ah, so you got Eagle and a KGV. Oh, Dido. Okay. All right. That's more than I thought was going to be in there. Because aren't the starter sets like 130 bucks or something like that, I want to say? I could be wrong. It, it's been a while. All right, now I also said so how much lighter do we want his face to be? Do we want it to be the, the same 
maybe we make it a slightly different bluish color than maybe what's going on here. I like the fact that there are different blues around here. Because, I mean, a guy this big with this many fun things going on, you just don't want to have him be just blue. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much, Shaz to, to, Tetsubo. Thank you so much. And Gandalf says, hello, little hobbits. Oh, my goodness. that's a That hobbit's too big. That's a, no, who is who is that old guy? Who is he? Dude, I don't know. But he keeps coming around. And, oh, and he leaves his nasty stuff behind. It's like, man, next time, just get rid of him. All right. Ah, uh, well, boo, I was almost, uh, I was almost dead. Didn't I, didn't I say 130? I don't know. That's, I'm going to say that I quoted 130. That's what I'm going to say. I'm also, I'm also going to grab me another one of my homemade filberts here. And we're going to play around with something maybe a little different here. We've got some cerulean blue in this. Ah, I was right. How about that? It's always fun being right. And seriously, I don't even remember ever seeing the retail price. Maybe I just saw someone post that or whatever somewhere. All right, a little bit lighter here. There. But yeah, this guy right here, I could see him being a frost giant. I could see him being some sort of, even a, like a gemstone giant. You could have him be an amber, actually an amber giant would be very interesting. I don't know, that's, uh, <laughs> if I ever do another one of these, we'll make him an amber giant or an amber troll. Because <laughs> that could be really, I don't know if I've ever seen an amber troll. Oh, let's see. Ex excited to see the Rocky get into the World War II gaming. Yeah. Well, well, you know me. You know how much I love my bolt action. Love me some bolt action. That is most definitely something I have to get back into this year. Of course, I have no idea if there's been a new version of bolt action, or are they still just on V2? All right, I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to find a little bit of that cerulean blue. And, and by the way, this looks very light. It is not very light. We can go a whole bunch lighter than this. We can go much lighter than this. We got ourselves a pun expected. How are you doing, pun expected? Happy Monday. Good start to the week, I hope. Hopefully everybody's having a at least a good start to the week. Now here again, look at that. There's your preglaze mixing into it, right? God, let that preglaze get into there. It's the whole point of it. I mean, yeah, it makes it darker. That's great, but it really is supposed to be there for you to access and use, like we're doing now. Like we just we're taking that dark color, moving it around. Well, that's what we're, now we're gonna. Try and use what's there and tone down any sort of weird dry brushy type texture that you might ordinarily get when you do a brush stroke like this. All, right, all kinds of fun things going on here with the little bit of texture right there. Let's, uh, let's make sure we come and get that. But again, this is where that, see, we're letting that all mix together here. Just going to kill whatever got on there real quick. Let's see. <laughs> Don't tease me with my hopes of saying, ah, the, old, the faded ultramarine. What's weird, Nessie, is that we kind of just created it here. <laughs> Uh, again, we are living in the times of 1984 where, you know, language and everything else is getting deleted. 
and words and stuff like that. And we're, we're deleting colors. That's what we do here. We literally just delete colors. That's what we do here. It's like, it's like the 1984 of painting, where we just we eliminate colors. This is the color elimination society here. Now the the advantage is not only is it kind of creating the same color as that. It also has a it has more grip. It just is a, a better consistency than the color it is effectively replacing right now. Oh, look at see all that darker darker glaze that it's grabbing there. And this is all of about 40 minutes, right? This was nothing but primer 40 minutes later. Th this is what we got going here. And I'm thinking that uh, there's a few folks out in the studio audience that would say, hmm, I got big things to paint. I, too, would like at least that kind of result after 40-ish minutes. <laughs> that could be very useful. Here, let's uh, throw a little bit of a tan into this, maybe even up here to okay, just looking to have some different colors here. Don't want too much of the same. I think we'll get some lighter fur in there as well. Well, we <laughs> we haven't seen berry white green or well either of our Holbein colors here. Where the oh here there here's one. Where the heck is the the other one's hiding? Yeah, it's scared of me. So this this is the one that's kind of been going away. And this is when we used to oh what the heck. Well, just just for Nessie here. Let's see. We'll just I don't even know where my jar is. I'm just gonna throw it out on the palette there. So so berry white green is out on the palette. Everybody's gonna feel nice and relaxed now because berry white is out. Let's see what happens with some berry white here. Now, of course, <laughs> berry white could be a whole nother have a whole nother combination to or connotation to it. Hey, Roger, how you doing? I hope Hello, that your week's off to a good start. My As we welcome the Gray Ronin. Thank you so much for that follow. We're going to get you fast Gandalf. Oh, I must fly. Psh. Thank you so much for that. Gandalf appreciates it too. So we'll just uh, on, on a maybe a couple of these rocks here. Now, speaking of welcoming back, we're going to welcome back Josh Foreman. Hey, Josh, how you doing? Welcome back. Nice to see you. And thanks again for another raid that is appreciated. So, folks, if you're not already following Josh Foreman, be sure that you do that. Yep, Josh, pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time on the streams I'm painting oils. I do acrylic tutorial videos, but for streaming, the well, I just would rather paint with the oils no matter what. I mean that that's just uh, that's just kind of how it is. But for streaming, the oils are so much easier because I can just kind of stop. I can show you what our troll from last week looked like. This is our Saturday show right here, and also we painted this whole thing in one show, just like we're gonna paint this whole thing in one show because well 54 minutes ago that's how much color he had on him I mean, it was just primer it was just that yeah just like pun expected said oils for life i just as far as i'm concerned if i never used acrylics again that would be just fine it is not practical for me just on for for several reasons, I still have to use the acrylics. But I would just, the oils, so they do everything better, for one thing. And they're ten times more relaxing to work with. And everyone who starts working with them says, yeah, you know what, you're right. Man, that is that was so chill. I felt like I was just sitting in a lawn chair eating Cheetos. Maybe with no garments on, 
you know, or in a beanbag chair, one of those kind of things. And now here we're just going to take our micro filbert here, and we're just going to pop in just a few little things here. We'll go back and we will mix those, blend those. Yeah, Josh, it just because you don't have to worry about things drying like uh <laughs> I know sub streamers they're they'll stop and do something and by the time they actually get to painting, the paint is dried on their brush. I mean it happened to me. <laughs> and, and then I I was doing the oils and I thought, Oh yeah, that's right. I don't have to worry about that anymore. That's very cool. No paint drying on the brush. <laughs> because obviously you're, you're trying to show somebody something or say or check out the chat or something like that so it is just all around it is super handy and then of course Hello, little hobbit. Spark my if you got big old trolls like this to paint well it makes that life a whole lot easier as we welcome an Aaron Thomas rolls a six a six I want I want six rolls of pipe weed that's what Gandalf wants Let's see, how many active brushes? Oh, geez, uh, Josh, maybe just a couple. The reason all these are here is just because I was cleaning them. So, yeah, to pay no attention to that stack of brushes there. We were just cleaning them before the stream started, that's all. I might use three-ish. The, the, the quadruple zero, the one of my homemade filberts, and maybe one of the micro filberts. If it's a smaller figure, sometimes we just use two. Now, let's see. MIG ammo took about 24 hours, but it wasn't wiped away, and just more oil on it applied straight from the palette. So it took about 24 hours. Okay. Uh, Josh, no, we don't. Uh, we don't do that. It's all just it's straight wet into wet oils. Now, of course, uh, you were just missed, unfortunately, the pre-glaze part of this. I don't know if I've had any examples that I could show you where something just kind of partially, partially done. But the idea is we now in this case, and same thing with the other guy, we take darker colors, usually indigo, umber, that sort of thing, and then we wipe off the excess with these sponges right here. And now we're taking our lighter, more opaque colors, and we go back in. So right over this row that you see me pointing to, those are all the opaques. Because with oil paints, they are the opposite of acrylics. The lighter colors are opaque, the darker colors not opaque. As in, most likely very translucent. So that's why you're going to go, most for the most part, you're going to go light over dark with the oils. Because again, oils, the vast majority of colors are going to be translucent. Or at least slightly so. There's a few exceptions, and I mean a few. There are very few exceptions. They exist, like Terra Rosa. All hail Terra Rosa. Well, I think one thing why I can get behind using oils is the fact that you can actually clean your brushes more toughly. Uh, I, I really don't do anything different than I do with the acrylics, actually. Um, and I use the same brushes for both. And this is the cleaner that we use right here because, oh, look. It's for dried acrylic and for oils. It doesn't have any vapor. There's no flammable whatever. It smells really good. I will suggest that you wash your hands, though, because uh, if it's on your fingers, it will remove the hand or paint on the handle of your brush. I don't care. But for folks that care about those things and it matters, just uh, just letting you know. Just letting you know. And it, if the oils dry in between sessions, because for me, they're going to dry somewhere between 8 to 10 hours later. Now, this is a case of one of my army painting series. After every episode, the paint dried, which was fantastic because actually doing glazes over dried oil paints is sensational because oils, well, you're not using water, so no watermarks. Also, you see that color shifting style. That's the interference blue, so it looks kind of like non-metallic. But then it shifts towards a blue. You can really only do that over dry oil paint. So all of, again, everything we're doing here, painted with the oils. We've got our whole bunch of these guys here. And again, the, the opportunity to do all that blending, 
all at once is really handy. And of course, well, we just finished uh, this guy. I think this was last Friday, maybe we painted this, I think. Something like that. And that was all painted in one session. Oh, thank you so much, Raging Dot of Cataclysm. Thank you so much for that follow. Gandalf appreciates it too. Now, let's, let's, again, lighter colors. Going to be more opaque, like this cadmium yellow here. So you can see how that's going to cover. And you can see that we're not layering or anything like that. Because we're just going to take another random soft brush here. And we're just going to do something like this. This is the other advantage of the oils. Because now, literally, it just takes a couple of brush strokes to paint something. Here, let's uh, throw a little bit more of that lighter color down. And we're just going to also stipple some of that in. Like so. Pushing some of the existing color into here, pushing some of this out into the existing color. So, bingo. Just a, a few seconds. We're not... You don't have to limit yourself to that ooh, endless, tedious layering of acrylics. Ah, Nessie knows. The the campaign to empty your wallet must continue. You you know that. <laughs> you, you know we have a tracker on your wallet. It's like he has at least 35 cents in his account. We need to get him to buy something. We need to get him to buy something now. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Do what now? Thank you. Just get that fall right in there. We're going to take a little sip of this right here. Thank you so much for that sub. Ah, and that tastes mighty good right now. For sure. So say we all. Oh, Not Jay really wants us to rehydrate here. Thank you so much, Not Jay. That is appreciated. I don't mind about 10 or 15 uh, consecutive subs right there. We'll be we'll be feeling really good after that. Uh, let's see. So Josh, it's a uh, for the most part it's Windsor Newton. More so just because well that's what I used in school and everything else. But there's also Gamlin and Williamsburg. Those two have a pretty big portion of the palette now, especially Williamsburg. Now, uh, there's, there's some really fun Gamlin colors. Now, the Williamsburg stuff, that's going to be on the pricier side. I'll tell you that right now. Williamsburg paints, they're going to cost you. But you kind of get what you pay for. They are, they are hand-ground, after all, or handmade, or whatever the heck they are. And apparently they really are, because there's certain colors that you just can't get in anything else. You just can't get it. So here's some of that berry white green that we're playing around with here. Oh, Josh, that is why we say that oils are the cheapest paint out there. Because, and for as much as I paint, which is in general between 12 to 18 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 a year. This I got over, let's say, 4 years, 2 months ago. That's a starter set. That was... 24 26 bucks on Amazon, something like that. Between that, the makeup sponges, the craft brushes, and that cleaner and the thinner, it all cost, whoops, not the same jar. You can get pretty much everything you need, five jars of this. You can have five jars of this stuff, which is what we call pieces of eight because they're about eight bucks a piece, or you can get about, well, four years worth of oil paints for the average person it's your choice but that is uh we started to notice uh, right away that i was using less oil paint and by less oil paint i mean significantly less because it just takes a tiny dot of it i would notice my palette this is three days worth of palette for me right here and there's a link to your starter set there now, also, Gamlin have starter sets. 
a bunch of different companies have starter sets. Check those things out. Uh, if you got a Michaels near you, use the 40% off coupon. Uh, Dick Blick, that's where we get a lot of our stuff. Never, ever, ever buy paint full price from Dick Blick because every five seconds they have a new sale. If you miss a sale, wait a month, the same stuff will be on sale again. Or two months. But the, the next terrain video that you see me do with the RM printable terrain, it's going to be painted with the oils so that I can show folks that, you know what? Painting terrain with the oils is a whole lot more relaxed than it is with the acrylics because the oils have real capillary action, not the pretend capillary action of, say, contrast paints or whatever. Because when you see the, the actual, actual capillary action of oils and you compare it to something like those contrast paints, you go, oh my gosh, there is no com there's no comparison. Hey, Jinx, how you doing? And Jinx, <laughs> Jinx has a little bit lighter wow it as well from a little bit of a little shop in a dick blick there. Is that not the store of doom? You thought GW was deadly, right? Looking looking through the GW site for stuff, and then all of a sudden there's Dick Blick comes along. Oh, Josh, the, I'll probably be doing some terrain uh, videos. I've already got a bunch of terrain videos on the YouTube channel. Now, we might be doing some terrain painting on Thursdays, but typically Thursday is my sculpting stream. So this is the thing that we were sculpting last Thursday. We'll be continuing this on Thursday. Now, but uh, sometimes we will interject terrain on those Thursday, on those Thursdays, if because uh, sometimes when I'm sculpting, I just have to sculpt something and leave it. So we might do a little bit of sculpting and then switch over to some terrain. So I would have to say, if it's going to be on a stream, the most likely day for terrain would be Thursday. And that starts later, though. Oh, gosh. It's 7.19 my time. Typically, somewhere around 10.30, 11 o'clock is when the Thursday streams start. Oh, yeah. Pun expected. It doesn't like uh, Van Dyke Brown. It doesn't like Dick Blick. Unfortunately, we kind of had to do that because there was... Uh, certain folks that just got a little bit too adventurous and no matter how many times we reminded them they continued to do it so we just had to unfortunately just uh, kill the words oh thanks josh yeah there's uh here let's uh i don't know if you saw the oh i think you this was up before you guys got in so there's at least two of those terrain pieces. I think there's three that I did video. Yeah, there's three of those terrain pieces that I did videos of. The most recent one was the, the three-piece tower in the center right there. There's also some fountains. And that's going to be kind of at the core of my Lord of the Rings battle reports here. So you can see we've got uh, kind of an Arnor, ruins of Arnor kind of a thing going on right here. We've got some scatter pieces as well. If you check out the blog, you'll be able to see some... Here's another example, some more of that terrain. Where's my where's my bolt-action stuff here? So I do believe... Ah, there we go. So we, we've got some bolt-action battle reports as well. And we've got rivers, hills, m m all kinds of fun stuff. And, of course, then there was this... Uh, that is actually a playable piece of terrain which doubles as an army board right there. So we love our terrain here for sure. Oh, whoa, whoa, Jinx is... Uh, whoa. I don't know if that's lucky Jinx or if that's bad. <laughs> because now it's all sitting in front of you. And, and it just it's just appealing. Whereas uh, when you see it on a website, it's like, ah, I don't know. It's just sitting there. Maybe, maybe not. But when it's there in front of you, oh my goodness... I can only imagine. Now this does have some of the same nifty texture that we had on this cloth right here. So we're going to see if we can do some similar treatment to that. Jeez. That's amazing that you can get better sales there. Uh, let's see.
let's see. Uh, no, Josh, actually, if you could maybe shoot me a message on Instagram or something like that, maybe with the link there, that would be very helpful. I'm just Wapelius on Instagram as well. But yeah, every Thursday we do sculpting streams. Some, sometimes we're converting. And let's show you here. So, all right, this is this is Snuffles right here, the great beast of Gorgoroth. Now, what you're seeing is all epoxy sculpt at this point. Yeah, let's get down. So he started out as a tinfoil armature. He starts to look a little bit more recognizable. Then the outside of this is the gray firm, extra firm Sculpey. And we just, we want to fill it all out. Then I could move the legs into position. And then we we started to fill out them things a little bit more. There's an orc for scale next to him. And then all the rest of this we did last Thursday. This was done with epoxy sculpt right here. We had just a blast doing all this. It was so much fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, once the oils are dry, they are just dry. You can you can almost reactivate epoxy sculpt with water. But yeah, once the once the oils have dried, they are dry. And again, for me, the oils are going to an oil painted miniature typically somewhere. Now it's going to depend on the colors because some colors just dry faster than others. But in general, somewhere between 8 to 12 hours, it should be dry. I usually wait about two days, two and a half, three days to throw the Army Painter Anti Shine over the top of it. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate that. Yeah, we've been using epoxy sculpt for, oh gosh, I think I first started using that in 2007 ish, something like that and fell in love with it. I mean, I use a lot of green stuff, don't get me wrong. We, we've sculpted tons of things in green stuff here. But the epoxy sculpt, it has all the advantages of... It's like having Sculpey, green stuff, and Milliput all in one. Just with none of the disadvantages. Hey, Manny Dreadful. Ooh, Manny Dreadful, thanks for reminding me. I put up some new stuff here. Check this out. I promised I was going to get you some more 2D art, and I found some. So we got some spacecapes here. I think this is a space. Oh, oh, not that's not that's. Uh, I did a whole series of these. These crazy baby dragons. Did a whole series of those. That was a watercolor, and oh, there's a spacecape. So that was uh, that's Olympus Mons in the background, and there's the aqueduct right there. So it's a terraformed Mars. Being from Chicago, I had to basically do a cityscape. I think that was Lake Tharsis. That's what it was. Yeah, Lake or the Sea of Tharsis. That's what that was, with Olympus Mons in the background and some some buildings there. Uh, let's see. Call me Mac. Ask, yeah, so are you using a dry palette? Uh, call me Mac. It's just oil paint on the palette, and I don't do anything artificial with it. Sometimes it dries out faster than others. So all we got is a piece of cardboard and a piece of parchment paper. I will use a glue stick to attach this, and then when I'm done, I just peel the palette paper right off of there. You can see there's a little bit of glue residue right there, but yeah, just a piece of cardboard. But the oils are going to stay wet long enough for me to work with them, and if I need more, I'll just put out some more. Thanks, Mini Dreadful. Hey, Lando, how you doing? Nice to see you in. Hope that you're having yourself a good Monday. Good start to the week. We're going to just to see, okay, how much of this texture do we want? Then we got to start thinking about these these little stones right here. How much, I don't know if I want to necessarily get lighter in there. I might uh, go the other way with this. Might go just darker with this. Here's a little bit of indigo. Well, thin this down. Not too much. I'm not really looking for that pin line wash. I'm just looking for something a little bit thinner here. And I just want to see how much darker AS. Yeah, see, I kind of like the idea of going a little bit darker there. <laughs> Looks like Lando's going to gonna be wandering into the oil range here. You know you want to. You know it's going to be fun. 
it's going to be chill and see we can make the the eyes look that much lighter by making everything around them a little bit darker let's uh, do something here with the other eye like so and folks these are from RM printable terrain the Kickstarter campaign that is very very soon that is the Birchwood Vale Kickstarter campaign we have the sculptor the proprietor we have him here in the chat He's, he's kind of busy working and doing stuff, too, so he's kind of in and out. But he is around to answer some questions. Now, uh, Call Me Mac, probably the reason why... Well, I don't know if I have... Ah! <laughs> this is probably why you are you are a trick there, because it's the same parchment paper, only I'll take a, uh, a chamois sponge. I'll throw some water in here. This is just the, the top of a Chinese food container. So at the bottom goes over the top of this, keeps it wet. So yeah, this is what I use for a wet palette. And look, it fits right there. So it kind of looks the same, doesn't it? So I'm glad I had that right here. I, I think I started keeping that there just so I could actually show people that. But it is the exact same parchment paper, nothing different. The only thing different is instead of underneath uh, a wet chamois sponge, what's underneath there just so happens to be a cheap, cheap piece of cardboard. That's all it is. I'm going to go back to my indigo here. Indigo and a little bit of my Van Dyke brown. That just makes such a dark color, a fantastically dark color. Let's see if we can't bring in a few more. Here, I'm just going to take my blending brush and just torn that down. See, see that edge? That, that edge is gone already. We got Ryder in the house. How you doing? Happy Monday. And there is a link to the Kickstarter campaign, folks. Don't uh, don't delay. Uh, I guess I go follow the campaign so that way when it goes live, you'll be able to see it. Lando asks, when you mix the oil paint with the thinner, are you just using the same thinner? Now, actually, Lando, I don't clean with the thinner at all. The thinner is just there literally to thin the paint and to obviously you know, mix in the containers, right? This is my high quality thinner. What I use for cleaning the brushes is actually, well, it's way better at cleaning them. And it's cheaper, too, at least because you're using the thinner for its original purpose. So this is from Windsor Newton. And look, it works for dried acrylic, too. It's like, it works for dried acrylic, too. And it has no vapors. Not flammable. It smells good, too. It really does. It actually kind of smells like a potpourri or something. Oh, you got it already. Yeah, because Kathy was using it. She was using that on her acrylic stuff for, oh my gosh. She was using it on her acrylic stuff for at least a couple of months before she also then started using the oils and all that kind of fun stuff. All right, we're going to thin this down again. Yeah, it, it doesn't it smell fantastic? It, it just it smells amazing. Now, like we were telling people, if you get it on your hands, it will start removing the paint off the handles of your brushes. I don't really care. It doesn't matter to me. But uh, I know some folks get really... Uh, I've literally seen people cleaning the handles of their airbrushes. And I'm thinking, why are you doing this? It's the outside of the brush. It has no impact. Ah, uh, and Key Lime Prime has used it on his stream, too. Ah, that's good. Yeah, VetBod Gaming, we've sort of turned this into a home shopping network, I think. I think we've kind of turned this into a home shopping network. Uh, I think next time we're also going to be selling some fruit slicers and probably uh, uh, some no-stick pans as well. Actually, I don't know. The no-stick pans could be handy, maybe for baking Sculpey. And let's uh, let's just get a couple more darks going this way too. 
I mean, we are as it is, we already sell exercise equipment here, pretty much. And as Pun Expected says, but wait, there's more. You'd think that's all that you'd think you couldn't possibly get anything else for nineteen ninety nine. But wait, there's more. Hey, Bethany, how you doing? Now, did you get to see his uh, his brother, Woody? So this is Woody Saws log right here. It's from the same, both from RM Printable Terrain. So we got Stone Cold Steve right here, and we've got Woody Saws log over here. So a pair of brothers. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, we don't have any... Oh, we, don't, we don't have a fruit slicer here. Well... <laughs> I just use my X-Acto knife half the time, so it doesn't really matter. I guess I guess that counts as my fruit slicer. Just use the X-Acto knife. I mean, all I've been doing is cutting a little bit of Sculpey with it. That can't hurt. Yeah, well, we that Teflon is a very important part of everyone's diet. <laughs> I mean, gee whiz, unless, unless you grew up eating Teflon... From all those those cheap Teflon pans where it all just kind of comes off, you just haven't lived until you've eaten some Teflon. That's what they call the high fiber diet back in the 70s and 80s. Oh, let's see. That was it. The the Sonic, oh, the Frozen Sonic Mini, Mi Mini, Mini. And like I said, I'm I'm thinking I might just hold off on that printer now until uh, maybe closer to the end of the year. Uh, I don't know when new printers have a tendency to come out. Like speaking of, but wait, there's more. You know, when do the new printer lines come out? All right, what the heck? I'm gonna grab a little bit of that. That's the berry white green. We're just going to chuck a little bit of that onto here. We're going to bounce back over here to... We've effectively made either yellow ochre or raw sienna here. Again, it's just I have like three tubes of raw sienna and probably two tubes or three tubes of yellow ochre. But uh, I prefer the consistency of what I got. And remember, this is the 1984 painting where we we eliminate colors we don't create color we eliminate colors we eliminate them oh, let's see got a mars pro instead do what now got one of those yeah, i've got the the elegu mars but i just have a feeling that that was never right from the get-go Yeah, I know there was a few printers that came out earlier this year. And I know a few folks that have gotten those. But they still have had nightmares with them. And I just said, well, okay. <laughs> if that kind of stuff can still happen with the newest generation of printers, I'm just going to wait. Because I just remember what printers were like back in the early to mid-90s. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then, especially if it said Epson in front of it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Bethany's trying to hold off on a printer until I painted everything I already have. Johnny Nagi, how you doing? Happy Monday. I hope you're having a good start to the week. I almost said happy Friday. Just like on Thursday, I think I kept saying happy Monday. <laughs> Then I think on Saturday I kept saying, uh, is it Friday? That is what your brain on no sleep is like. Yeah, we had to use the, the Epson stuff because we were printing large format art prints and stuff. And at, at that time, back in the mid-90s, there just was... Epson was pretty much the only option for such things. 
I still remember an HP printer where you had to get, you had to purchase memory for the printer. Yeah, it wouldn't matter how much memory you had on your computer or RAM or anything like that. You had to purchase RAM for your printer. Now, this is a really neat, uh, look at this. This is very nifty. That's that purple matter. Just mixed it with the white. And we're going to chuck that into here just to get some difference here. It's mostly going to get glazed over and such, but we just we can't have nothing but grays here. We've got to have something else besides grays. We need something more going on here. There's a really nice industrial size printer, but the price tag is rough. Yeah, Quiz, it's just for me. It just has too many that the USB drive is messed up. It was to me, it was never right from the get-go. And obviously, it wasn't super expensive. I, I didn't even get it actually, but something that I'm going to try and invest in seriously time and money wise it needs to be more reliable than that now for other folks it, it's that doesn't matter for me it just has to be right every well almost every time there, there's just not time to screw around with it because the whole idea of it is to save me time not to absorb more time <laughs> yep, Kuiz, that is, uh, and that's the thing we got no time for here. Literally zero time. There is time to pour resin into the vat and press go. That's what we got time for. So, Johnny Nagi, I, I hope that you've got some fun, some fun miniature and hobby stuff going on here in the new year. So we're starting to take some of that purple matter now. It's starting to wander around. This becomes more and more blue as this becomes more and more warm-ish. And as Nessie knows, if a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. So we're just going to put this all over the place. We're also going to welcome Inner Excellence. How you doing? Boy, Lando still had a dot matrix. Yeah, those of us, those in the audience that are old enough to remember the excitement between a descending character printer, or uh, raise your hands now. I'll never forget when my brother-in-law was all excited over descending characters. See, Reimer had the pleasure of using one of those early 90s Epson printers. The experience still keeps me from a 3D printer. Yes, that's, uh, oh my gosh, Reimer, there was a, uh, a friend of mine, now we're talking about these large format Epson printers that printed 13-inch by 19-inch prints on paper that cost about $2 just for the sheet of paper. And the cartridges, even then, were something like 50 60 bucks a piece. And oh my gosh, he pressed print, and it was making the noise. But it wasn't feeding the print uh, paper through, which was the Epson printers had a nasty habit of doing that. So for about an hour and a half, it was shooting ink all through the printer with no paper in there. It just shot ink all over. It just had to throw it away. It was dead. It was dead and gone. So look at, we actually used some, almost some pink here for some of the lighter tones on the club over here. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Ripon Gaming is uh, the Empson printer I worked for in the uh, oh in the automotive engine. Oh, okay. Now here we got to figure out okay what's going to happen with some of these these little rocks. I don't I don't know yet. We don't have to decide just now. And I'm even just going to throw some of these lighter tones here into his uh, de facto beard here. The not beard beard. We're not quite sure what we're going to do with some of this. I'm just going to throw some, again, some lighter colors in here. And we've got Mr. Blending Brush. 
Just take him here. Like so. This is, again, why the miniature becomes your palette. You can see now some of that violet type color that is now mixed. And all it is, this is kind of a soft brush that just has no paint on it. That's literally all it is. We can soften some of those brush strokes too. Hey, you monkey live, how you doing? Wow, they still sell dot matrix printers. What the heck for? What are people doing with those? I just, I figured there can't be dot matrix printers anymore. The, the the kind with the uh oh what is that the they've got the little the the teeth right and the holes in the paper man I remember those thanks again homunculive oh yeah I I was wondering Loim if it was kind of like a cash register receipt sort of a thing. Oh, Loim, I don't think, uh, were you in here earlier when I was asking uh, who has played any of the Lord of the Ring, or no, sorry, War of the Ring board game? And have they tried any of the expansions on that? Because the idea that I have bouncing around in my head is to sort of combine the War of the Ring with the Middle Earth SBG sort of using the War of the Ring as kind of the campaign map type of deal. And then using the War of the Ring to play out the games with some of the event cards and character cards of the War of the Ring game somehow being incorporated into my games of Lord of the Rings. So I, I know that there's like a first edition, a second edition, a collector's edition, and then there's these expansions that were done, but I know not of what they are. I've I've seen those playthrough videos, just about two or three of them. Ah, Sorast doesn't Sorastu do a whole bunch of painting videos on War of the Ring miniatures? Loim, I think he does, right? But I just I wasn't sure if any of those expansions, if the the cards that are available in there are, are worth it at all. Uh, I thought so as soon as you mentioned that name, it sounded awful familiar. So see what we did here? See how we just picked up uh, some of those edges? Right, We softened everything down underneath, and then we started to pick up some edges. We're going to start doing that here, too. Yeah, I I haven't. Well, I would I would imagine. Yeah, I could see you watching his uh, the the Star Wars the Legion ones there, Nessie. But I just uh, because I type in you know Lord of the Rings battle report or something like that, and then maybe if I see one of Lockie's painting sessions or something like that, then all of a sudden the Zorast or Sarasto comes out, and I'm thinking, okay. And I was thinking War of the Ring, as in the GW War of the Ring. It's like, no, those definitely aren't GW miniatures. And then I realized, oh, it's the board gaming. I'm going to just keep popping in some more of these liner coats right here along some of these edges. And again, we're just using that quadruple zero. That's a synthetic brush. And then we'll come back in here and we're going to tone down some of those brush strokes. Yeah, tone some of those down. Now, what about here on his hand? What are we going to do there? I think I might even, just for the heck of it, let a little bit of that warmer pinkish color get down onto his fingers here. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll blend a little bit of that with our softer brush. Makes things a little bit easier. Going to grab a little bit of that tan color. 
don't necessarily want the hands to be this light. I kind of like the idea of the, the lighter color focusing here. And also just a little different color with the hands. So you can see now it's got some, there's some tan over there. We almost got some pink over there. Oh, let's see what the heck we're going to do with some of these toes here. How much lighter can we get down here? We can't really get, well, I can get lighter than that. I don't know if I want to go lighter than that. Now, easy solution there. We just, we just make it darker. When in doubt, make it darker. All kidding aside, when in doubt, make it darker. And that's pretty darn easy to do with the oils, even though we have a tendency to work dark to light. And you can see how that covered, were we trying to brush it on in the same way we would darker acrylic paint? No, we weren't doing that. We didn't do a glaze either. It was sort of a semi, just see how little paint there was on that brush? Just not a whole bunch of paint. Boy, cobalt, that's a word I haven't heard in a long time. Holy smokes. When, oh, I don't even want to think about the last time I heard people talking about COBOL. And we're not talking about the Lords of COBOL either. So same over here. We'll just let's see what we can do with some of these here rocks. We might do some pin line glazes over the top of those as well. Now this, I might just cool some of this down because of its proximity to all these, these warm colors over here. And as you can see, we're not we're not layering here, right? We we're sometimes going two, three, four values over. We're not just going one little value up, one little step up, right? We're we're hitting, we're going big. With the oils, you just go big, and then you just sort of tone it down afterwards. You're know, gonna maybe start to get some paint on these rocks over here. Let's see what is going on with this here. But look how it's picking up that pre-glaze. How that's darker there. Deuce, how you doing? Happy Monday. How did you do today? Oh, geez, Pascal. Oh, my goodness. Wow, that is... Uh, talk about the Wayback Machines. Still not quite sure what we want to have happen here. There are these little ridge lines right here. So not quite sure what we want to do with that yet. We'll figure, we'll figure something out at some point. And if it's something I don't like, that's why they made makeup sponges. There are no mistakes in oils. There's just makeup sponges. Back over it to the face. Uh, just trying to figure out, like with this one, right? We said, okay, what are the ways we can get the face to be more of a focal point? And we did that with intensity contrast, right? We took that bright, basically bright orange and a bright, cool phthalo green and just put them right next to each other on the face. That was one of the ways we were able to concentrate with all the other stuff going on around here. That was one of the ways we got folks to be looking at the face itself. Let's see here. I can maybe get some some more darks out here. We are going to try that with the Terra Rosa. A little bit of the Asphaltum. What that? I will let that mix a little bit of the Ivory Black. Don't necessarily want the edge of that. Yeah, you know, I kind of like that being darker. Almost sort of like that outer edge being darker rather than lighter. Like it's been aged or burned or something. I don't know, but it just seems to be more interesting that way. Let's 
Then we'll have to get some kind of reflected light back down in here. It's we just can't have a whole lot of nothing like that. I'll just use whatever mid-tone I happen to just have sitting on the brush here. I think it's got a little bit of pink to it. And as you can see, look at that. Look at the dark on the end of that brush. It's mixing with the pre-glaze. <laughs> Somehow some kind of weird 1970s song just came to mind of mixing with the pre-glaze just to some kind of weird 70s tune i have no idea why that happened probably because of all the old timey talk that we're doing here i'm gonna maybe go back to where the heck is my there you go so we we haven't used our homemade filberts in a while we are going to again give them a thorough cleaning here with our paper towel look at this Look at how thorough that cleaning is. That's it. <laughs> because if we get a whole bunch of moisture on there, right, using the brush cleaner, something like that, kind of defeats the purpose because what we wanted to do was more of a dry brush, right? Kind of hard to do if you got brush cleaner all over the thing. And tons of paint. This is one of those ways... We're always talking about thin over thick and vice versa, all that kind of stuff. And I think people just assume that thin means, wow, it's got tons of thinner in it, right? Tons of liquid. Well, no. That is also thin paint. Um, that's almost thinner than thin paint because you don't have a whole bunch of moisture sitting in there. Ah, there we go. Yeah, it's doing, doing, doing the mix again. <laughs> Uh, and just try to pick up some edges on these these rocks, and they are nowhere near as light as they can be. We can still go lighter than this. We don't really want to do that right now. We're, we're an hour and forty minutes in. We're we're not going to be burning our lightest highlights yet. Mm -mm, not doing that. Want to hang on to those? Got to hold them cards close to the vest. Let's see, storage technology has advanced far enough that most mainframes are gone. Wow, that's, uh, I remember the the days of the mainframes. It's like the second age. Oh, over here too. Let's get some. Just pick some of these out. And then we're going to go into some of the individual faces on these rocks here. And then we're going to make some a little bit more greenish, whatever. I think I can bring up my brightness now. I think it's safe to do that. I think it's definitely safe. Now we are using that Gamlin Quick Dry White. And for whatever reason, the Gamlin Fast Matte White that was furnished us by Al Capone at just, I never could confirm that that actually did anything. It didn't seem to be any flatter, and it certainly didn't really seem... It maybe dried things a little faster. But to me, the fast matte white has had a noticeable effect. Now, it could be just the way it was mixed. One I mixed myself, the other one was mixed uh, by Al, so... That's something else, too, folks. When you get maybe a different result with the same color, maybe you put more or less thinner in it than I did. And, and there's, you know, that's not a big tragedy. That's not a big deal. Here, let's uh, take more of the paint out of that. Look, look at this. Where are we at here on the brush? Look at the gentle... Look at this. Right? We, we ignore the thumb when we're painting. When we're sculpting, we love the thumb. But when we're painting... We try to ignore the thumb as often as we can. We just we don't want to have a death grip on that brush. I'll, I'll never forget that when folks say, yeah, man, all the paint is wiping. I'm just wiping off all the paint. And then I watch some folks paint, and I'd say, you're lucky you still have a miniature there. Like, these are hollow on the inside. There's some people that are holding that brush so hard, they, they punch a hole through this thing. They would literally punch a hole through it. That's how hard they're holding their brush. Is it any wonder the paint's getting wiped off? You're practically snapping your brush in half. 
And that that's no joke. I've seen but it's like you can see their blood vessel or like it, their knuckles are turning white. And I'm thinking, are you like on a scary roller roller coaster ride while you're painting that miniature? Because your knuckles seem to have zero blood flow getting past them. What are you doing? And then, then people started to become aware of it, and I think maybe they started to ease up on the brush just a little bit. Oh, my goodness. Because I know folks that they can only paint for an hour. They say, oh, my hand hurts. I'm tired. I said, well, no wonder. Look at how you're holding that brush. There is so much tension in your entire body. It's, you're, you're like a rubber band that's been stretched a mile. See, that's, we, we, we just, see, we do all kinds of uh, health coaching here, right? This is the exercise. It's not just a cavalry channel, the Lord of the Rings channel, the food network. It, or it's also a home shopping network. It's the exercise channel. This is a full service channel right here. We cover everything. Let's see, the Michael's discount code with 20 Windsor Newton uh, paints, more brushes and thinner added. Need another item or two to make shipping free. Well, I, I'm, I'm guessing they don't have the Williamsburg paints. Now you have your you have your indigo, you got your Terra Rosa, right? Now now Lando, if they have Gamlin paints, be sure to get the S Fultum. And uh if they if they if you have the option of getting the Gamlin paints, get the Gamlin Van Dyke Brown as opposed to the Windsor Newton Van Dyke Brown. Because what people have told me is that the Windsor Newton Van Dyke Brown is, is closer to umber than it is to what the Gamlin Van Dyke Brown is. So just that's just from what people have told me that have gotten both. So just a little something to keep in mind. Here, let us pop in a little bit lighter color. There was my where's my blending brush? You're sitting around here somewhere. So we got this big old blob right here, right? Well, actually, we don't have a big old blob there. Not anymore. Nice and smooth. We do have a Megan. Uh, the the Egyptian violet from Williamsburg definitely. I'm telling you, <laughs> I, I love it. I absolutely love that Egyptian violet. It's uh, it's just sensational. I don't know if you can see this here, but we're just we're chucking some of the Terra Rosa onto another one of these pouches here. And again, because ah, yeah, you can see it here. Now we're using one of our micro filberts, right? And let's say we want to just go a little bit lighter than that. I'm just gonna grab something. I don't even care what the heck it is. Cami mellow? Nah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this should be fun. Barite green. What's an what's a more natural hair, uh, highlight for a something like a terra rosa than barite green? Well, we're gonna find out because we're gonna take that big old blob of green and we're gonna spread this around here. Ha <laughs> ha Look at that. Yeah, we just used green to highlight a reddish orange color. We just did that. And with no glazing, no fuss, no muss. But wait, there's more. So so for Nessie here, we have brought out the berry white green and it's doing some fun stuff. I'm going to just throw it on a couple of the facets here of our little rocks and such. We're going to make some of these some warmer grays like we talked about. Here I'm just focusing on some somewhat cooler grays. And folks, uh, just for uh, if you're new here and you just kind of 
getting in. These are one. Of, well, this is one of three trolls. This is one that we painted on the Saturday extravaganza. You can go back and check this out. These are all from RM Printable Terrain, the Birchwood Vale Kickstarter campaign that is imminently about to launch. So go check that out. Be sure to follow the campaign. We also have the sculptor here in the house with well in the chat with us anyways. We also have another sculptor in the chat with it. We got Brushcraft. Brushcraft, how you doing? The 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 2D art's been really looking fantastic there, Brushcraft. I've been seeing it on Insta. So folks, be sure to give Brushcraft a follow because he will sometimes stream that artwork. He will also stream his miniature painting. So be sure to give Brushcraft a follow. Just hitting some of this green here. So yeah, this this berry white green. I mean, who knows? It, Nessie comes in here, insists on seeing berry white green, and well, look what we're using. Look what we're using. We're using that to literally highlight the reddish yellow cloth here. Oh, thanks, Brushcraft. You you got the uh, hopefully you got the PayPal thing for that. Thank you so much. It's going to be nice to have that physical copy there. And Brushcraft, I don't know if you were around. <laughs> I've been asking anybody who has played the War of the Ring board game if they've used any of the expansions. Are those are they really do they have some really unique things in the expansions, or is it just kind of, well, it, it's sort of nice? Because what I was thinking about was taking the War of the Ring board game and using that as sort of the campaign version of the Middle Earth game. So some of the action and event cards that are in that would affect the overall campaign, and maybe even at the start of some of the battles. So I thought that could be a, an interesting little mashup between the two sh systems there. Ah, <laughs> yes, but Nessie's going to pay for that with the Wonkalorians. Yes. So let me see. We have Dandelorians. We have Candylorians. We have Bangalorians. I think we had Blandalorians. They were basically chefs that just didn't use any spices or something like that. Never played the board game. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Speaking of, well, Gandalf, we have Gandalf to welcome in Captain Nathardis. Thank you so much for that follow. I appreciate that. So does he. But I've been watching a bunch of playthrough videos on that. And when I see some of those cards, all I keep thinking is how that could play into, oh, it's monochrome beige. Okay. Well, geez, there's the fashion version, and then there's the chef version. And then, of course, oh, there was the uh, the Handalorian was the uh, was the maintenance worker, right? Or oh, he had a tool belt, I think it was. That was the Handalorian. All right, a couple, couple more of our lights right here, too. But, yeah, the, the board game has all the, well, it has the map. And it has these rules for going into siege. It has these rules for mustering. And basically, as, as neat as the GW thing was, it was just a couple of D6 tables. And I thought this, with these cards and everything else, it, that's a way to maybe bring in the audience. Because they could say, okay, here here's a character dice for the Armies of the West. Well, here is another I for the 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 shadow player it says that we're starting to get a couple little highlights in here now and just don't be afraid to just you know i might just have to make a little change here now also you don't necessarily convince yourself that everything you did was wrong because that's not really a good plan either but sometimes you look at something and you say oh how the heck did that happen and you rectify it just like what we did here I might even take some more of this cadmium yellow here. We'll mix it with the Terra Rosa. 
And we'll see if we can maybe do a couple of spots of lighter rust here, maybe. As Angry Ham says, let's see, about 20 bucks for 30 of the synthetic brush. Oh, that's, uh, that is not bad, Angry Ham. Well, we got Snick Sun. Snick Sun, how you doing? Well, happy Tuesday. It's even Tuesday here, so I will say happy Tuesday, but also uh, well, happy New Year because it's, I think it's been that long. So I hope that you're doing well. Yes, I'm going to even throw some of that up here, but boy, really glad I just changed this little bit of a shape right here because the light's going to sort of catch you here, but how the heck was the light getting down there? So I like this better. We got a little bit of arch there. Now it follows the arch of his shoulders. You want to hold it this way, it even makes more sense now. Yes, it does. So Snake, this is uh, well, this is Rocky, and now meet Woody. So we painted Woody here on Saturday, and these two guys are bestest friends. But they got a third friend. Where the heck are you? So we'll be painting up this guy probably in a tutorial video because he's a little bit tall. He's like, hello. Well, there's a fungus among us. <laughs> so it should be very fun painting him, too. It's nice to actually... He's hollow, so it's nice to paint giant things that don't weigh a thousand pounds. Alrighty, then. Do we need to mess around? Yeah, you know what? Got to do something about that. That can't just be... I'm looking at this going... Hello. Little hobbits, spark my ganja. Oh, Hugh Hefner, thank you so much for that follow. Ganoff says, hello, little hobbit. So, oh, I know, he's scary. Get out of here, old. that old dude is bugging me. That old dude is bugging him. Yeah, Angry Ham, I'm just going to, like I did with this one, just going to look through some pictures, see what I can find. I find something interesting. We'll we'll try and uh I mean we did some crazy stuff on these two guys, so I guess we'll have to do the same sort of thing. On mushroom guy, if not more so. We might have to make that even more crazy. More of this light green here. Maybe even say that it's reflecting that piece of metal there. That this sort of infinity mirror of metal reflection. So I think that looks a little more interesting now. Uh, this, we might just uh, get a little bit. Oh, there's some. There is still some skin. Some skin texture back there that could use some paint. Uh, yeah, there are some areas of this that I can really only get to once I can turn my regular lights on. Because maybe not even, uh, it sort of does it with the acrylics too, but especially with the oils, the super bright lights. Yeah, that's going to just, uh, that's going to create too much mayhem with reflections and such. So. To get a couple of lights there on that. Uh, I'm gonna go back to remember this uh, crazy. Was that the purple matter mixed with some of our lighter tones? We'll just throw a little more of this in here. I think we could use some some of this on the underside of his hands now. We did it on the other one. here and let that sort of come over the top here yeah that's more interesting than just a bunch of dark there almost there that that might be a little too much but guess what we still have literally still have the preglaze sitting there see how that all of a sudden whoop gets darker there Right. Uh, I'm thinking of maybe popping in a couple of. 
lighter tones here on those knuckles. I'm going to look at these knuckles here. This is where we kind of do a comparison. It's like, all right, yeah, I did put some lighter stuff here. Maybe I should also then do that on these knuckles right here. Nothing super fancy. Just make this where I can, ah, there we go. Creating a little bit of a finger tripod for myself. So we get in here. Over right where those fingernails are going to meet the skin. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much, Belenoct, for that follow. Ganoff appreciates it too. Hello, little hobbits. We haven't had fast Gandalf. I don't think they can bring fast Gandalf out here. It'd be fast enough to get away from these big old trolls. Lots of big old trolls. And here, can you see? Yes, you can. All right. That, I don't necessarily want to get that very much lighter than the this little pouch that's over here. But texture-wise, because we have, there is texture sculpted in this. We'll try to have texture be the difference between these two instead of something radically different with color or light and dark. Maybe just putting that little bit of texture there is going to be enough. And then I can see we need to... Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's this rock over here. How in the world does that have no light? on that face at all it's like the yeah the the top face of it was pretty much darker than the shadow sides that didn't make a whole lot of sense but now it makes a little more sense let's back out of this so we can see a little bit more of them here speaking of darks i'm going to take one of my micro filberts here and see if i can pop in few more dark in just a couple of areas here. And sometimes you go in there, maybe just you go a little bit too much with lightening up something. Might even darken up some of the cloth edge there. I'm looking at his skin right in here. Is there enough? shadow to make that be that dark mm, maybe not which means I'm gonna head back over here to some of my lighter blue color and it's right along this couple of these uh, skin shapes are just a little bit yeah I think so and Maybe even here. Yeah, we're just we're just doing a little bit of a stippling effect here. Part of it is it it'll stick. If you stipple, it sticks. Uh, I <laughs> I don't know if I need that to be a, in the book of Wapple, but that could be. <laughs> if you stipple, it it shall stick. <laughs> That could be chapter 48. I don't know. Well, and I know in our sculpting stream, we will be able to bring up... I do believe it's chapter 47. Yeah, because chapter 46 is... Uh, all hail Egyptian violet. Everything else is just purple. But I do believe chapter 47 is... the uh, Tells you to worship the thumb if you're sculpting, but uh, dismiss the thumb if you are painting. And as I work up again, that is going to be, there's some areas here covered by this as far as shadow goes. So we can't go too crazy with highlights on those. It's, it's really tempting to just go berserk with the highlights. We haven't done a film noir on this in a bit. We'll do that again. So speaking of lights and darks, ah, I think we got ourselves some solid lights and darks there. Yes, we do. 
How's about this thing? Does that make more sense? Yes, it does. That is not a reflection. That is painted on there. So, boom, that worked out well. Look at this, celery. How you doing there, celery? Back to our oils there. That bypassing the muted acrylic stage and all the way to the nice juicy oil stage. So, happy Tuesday morning to you there, celeries. Uh, glad that you could join us here. Now, I will take... Oh gosh, what is left of my it's left of my bright white over here. Let's just find a some spot here on our three day old palette, which is interesting because if this was acrylics, oh my goodness, there wouldn't even be this much space to find anything to put some new paint. Ah, there oh even more. Yes. That works quite well. That also helps. So now I think we're starting to make some headway here. Definitely starting to make some progress there. I think we got our light edge down there. So we're, we're all good there. However, maybe some of these rocks could use some. Thanks, Elleries. How you? Uh, I'm glad you. Glad you like these guys. They were. They've been really fun. I mean, I knew they would be. Sometimes there's things like, yeah, that's gonna be really fun, and you don't realize quite just how much fun you're gonna have with it until you actually get to them. So, here is his buddy right here. That tool, big guys. Whoa, big guys here. Actually, I'm going to have to take a picture of these guys on my terrain boards. Literally on my terrain board. That's how huge they are. <laughs> that is how big these boys are. Now, they are about three times the size of a typical Lord of the Rings troll. So, I, do <laughs> I don't... Well, we won't be able to use these for Lord of the Rings games unless there's some kind of crazy special scenario that we just create for ourselves. And drive all of the uh, all the Lord of the Rings guys nuts on all the Facebook pages because they'll say you can't be making up your own stuff and doing things like fun. There's dice and competition involved. Oh, thanks, Celeries. That was uh, I, I looked around through uh, for some forest troll references, and I saw a lot of that interesting. Almost kind of bluish green. Now, uh, that'd be fun to do. I hope that the the new year here has led to some fun new hobby possibilities or painting possibilities for you. As we chuck in a little bit more lights over here. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Midwest miniature guy. Hey. Thank you so much for that follow. Hello, little hobbit. And then he's like, mm. every time I turn around, that old guy comes in here. Ah, I hate that old guy. Just literally every time he's got his back turned, Gandalf shows up. So I hope you're doing okay, Midwest Major Guy, and happy Tuesday morning. Well, it's Tuesday morning here now, because it is 12.18. We are six hours, six minutes in. And yes, six hours, six, six minutes ago, there was no more paint on this guy than there was on this guy. So we are advancing rapidly with the oils as always. Let's see. Celery's picked up some Big Child Creatives. Ooh. Yeah, some BCC. I, I've got some actually some BCC busts and, and such and other large scale figs that hopefully I can maybe get to either later this month or February. Now, Midwest Miniature Guy, we're having a lot of fun, obviously, with the oils here, but we've sort of reached an interesting stage with. Uh, some of our Lord of the Rings stuff where we're trying to also maybe by 
mid-February, late February, maybe be live streaming some Lord of the Rings games. We've been compiling miniatures like crazy. Terrain, lots of different ideas. And I've just gotten some more potential ideas as I've seen some playthroughs on the War of the Ring board game. And, and trying to come up with a way of using some of the War of the Ring, the, the cards, the action dice, whatever, to somehow have some effect on a, a campaign of Lord of the Rings. So just uh, kind of coming up with some additional ideas for that, having some fun. And of course, uh, well, trying to figure out the whole 3D printing thing because I was going to try and use the Hexton Hills tiles as my map. I have a lot of them, but nowhere near enough to make a Middle Earth map in Hexton Hills tiles. Midwest Miniature guy finally has that stream up and running as well. And he does that Wednesday and Sunday nights at 8. Boy, that was, that was definitely some crazy stuff going on with the internets and... That was just that was quite the saga there, so I'm glad that that is all settled. Uh, so celeries, I have only been one. I think I may be seeing five playthroughs of the game. Now, most of them tend to be, was it the second edition game? There's a collector's edition that I saw someone playing with, and then they've mentioned these different expansions. Oh gosh, what are some of the... There's Lords of Middle-Earth or something like that. I, I think I've, I've heard at least two, maybe three expansions. I don't know what those add. I just don't know enough about it. So folks, be sure to give Midwest Miniature Guy a follow. Because, well, getting back into the game is a very important thing. So at, what, what will you be streaming when you get back into the... Uh, into the uh, the streams there as far as miniatures I'm going to take a little bit of my this is the bare right green right here ah there we go yeah we just need a couple again a couple little edges over here right couple of them over here And we've got our blending brush sitting out here. So right there, we've got that kind of a blob on the end there. That's what we intended to do this with right here. So we're going to take that, just extend that out. Same with these guys. Move those right along. Not working on, oh, the Dwarven Griffin Rider. Yeah, the... I've got a whole bunch of... Well, I wish I could get to my printer. I have to... I still have to rework the entire printing area because I just didn't... I thought 3D printing wasn't going to have a as big of a footprint as it does, but it has a massive footprint. <laughs> so I have to readjust that entire area to make that a more effective area. But there, there just has not been any time for doing that. I'm really hoping that as this month draws to a close, I can just basically pull a couple of all-nighters and get most of the furniture and stuff moved around. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, which, uh, well... Song of Ice and Fire slash Game of Thrones figs from Dark Sword are very fun. I know I've gotten, uh, we've done a few of those here too. I know we did the, a whole bunch of the Night's Watch. We I know we did the Jamie Lannister. I'm probably, I've already done two Cersei's <laughs> at least. And 
and again that there's some of that pre-glaze some of this like down here literally this is just the original pre-glaze here it is not kidding so I'm just gonna come in here and we'll just uh, do a little something with that how's about we get in our little terra rosa here too not just the grain better I mean not like anyone gonna see that but there we go yeah Midwest miniature guy that was uh, was that two years ago well I guess three years ago now at ReaperCon when that was <laughs> oh the whole craziness of how that was brought into our lives here but we have definitely done a whole bunch of that stuff I know the halberds that was the first uh, unit painting series I did with the Song of Ice and Fire. So yeah, there's your starter box halberds right there. And do we hit all oh, the... No, the pyros are not in the starter box. Nope, not in the starter box. And we've, of course, done... Uh, I mean, this is just a tiny portion of some of the Song of Ice and Fire stuff. Actually, i got to get me another box of those crossbow dudes. I think oh we painted oh we painted the King's Guard at Reprecon in oils that's right. And I painted too many of those. I think I painted at least four units of Knights of Castlebury Rock. I don't want to paint any more of those. I think I've painted two Stark armies so far. Wouldn't mind having another unit of the Tully Cavaliers though. That would be fun to have back. Wouldn't mind that. And then of course, as much as I loved painting the horses here doing five units of those on stream like literally painting the entire thing on stream just like we did these guys speaking of night's watch here we painted all of these on the stream because this is the cavalry channel after all and of course doing all the snow and ice effects they, they do take some getting used to because of using the sanding sticks to try and get rid of the mold lines and such but it is nice that the, the weapons are done in the harder plastic. So instead of the entire thing being that softer bone style plastic. Aspect like those land like the halberds, the, the the swordsmen. Very nice that those are not smushy. At least as far as the weapons go. And so far out of all of the Song of Ice and Fire units. There's only been one that's hard to rank up. Uh, no, actually, this is from RM Printable Terrain. Actually, it's one of three trolls. So this is the one we painted on Saturday. This is the one we painted here tonight. We're going to be making a video out of this. So, yeah, we'll be making a tutorial video out of this guy. So it's one of three trolls. And they got a Kickstarter campaign coming up real soon. Uh, this Thursday, we're going to continue the sculpting process on Snuffles over here. So we've got our epoxy sculpt over our tinfoil and Sculpey armature. So we'll be finishing him off. And we actually have another unit. Uh, I have one more regular unit of Royal, uh, not, not Royal Guard, but your uh, Rohan riders to paint. So these are the ones that we converted sculpted all that kind of fun stuff but there's six more writers that we have to slam out plus well i think now we're going to be working on at least 15 different lord of the rings armies at this point because i have some figures now for oh was it umbar the uh corsairs of umbar Yeah, so what we did on those, we just took the regular riders, we snipped off uh, the bows, and we snipped off uh, the quivers on the back of them there, and we redid the helmets, we redid some of the armor, we gave them capes, and they became Rohan Royal Guard. Saved about $104. And then we sculpted ourselves the Riders of the Dead, because instead of paying about $30 for an ancient, horrible metal figure, I took some Tomb King horse bits, some fire-forged horses, Army of the Dead torsos and arms, 
and we made ourselves some Riders of the Dead. We we really had fun sculpting this one. I forget someone actually gave this one a name, but yeah, with three Tomb King's legs, Tomb King's head, we sculpted muscle, sinew, hair, robes, all that kind of fun stuff. So so far, and also too when we we resculpted a whole bunch of Easterlings into special characters. I think I've saved myself about 200 and some odd hours, maybe closer to 250 <laughs> by just sculpting stuff and having a blast instead of trying to buy it. Oh, like celeries. Yeah, that was uh, that was a lot of fun sculpting that. So every Thursday we do sculpting. You know, sometimes it's a, it's a little conversion like this. We needed a basically another version of where is our Emory Hill? As much as I love my old metal Emory Hill, that's not super practical for gameplay necessarily. So now we've got ourselves a much less fragile plastic version, much like our rest of our Knights of Dull Amroth here. So we just had fun to cloak, some armor. Love doing the armor. I think we did some of that. Oh, yeah. Here's another one of our Easterling special characters. We're going to be doing a little painting video on this one. This is our war priest. Really do love having this guy in the army. But yeah, miniature, miniature, best, best uh, miniatures guy. I'm really looking forward to uh, finally getting in some games with these guys. Uh, we'll, we'll just start with some simple battle reports, and then then we'll try and work our way towards being able to broadcast them. I like celery. I think we're going to get ourselves a couple. Yeah, we're going to get ourselves a few darks in here. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of scratch sculpting. Uh, I've, actually, I've got a couple of the Reaper, what are they, the uh, Rock Trolls or something like that. We're going to convert those into Armored Trolls for Lord of the Rings. So we'll be just chopping off all the rocks and adding helmets and shields and weapons to them. And then there's some other things we have to scratch sculpt uh, because of the crazy small scale of Lord of the Rings. We're going to uh, sculpt ourselves some Black Guard of Baradur. We are creating an entire chariot army out of uh, a whole collection of stuff. So those are Fireforged Horses, Tomb King's Chariot, chopped in a few places. And then I think we're using, uh, yeah, we've got uh, the, the regular metal Candish figures. We, we found a few sources that have figures that are more like Lord of the Rings scale, tiny as it is. Ah, adamantium's getting persecuted by the connection issues. Sorry about that, adamantium. I'll catch you later, Midwest Miniature Guy. And folks, be sure to give Midwest Miniature Guy a follow because he's getting back into the streaming thing. Uh, streaming thing. So be sure to support him. Hello, cards. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So this is we started with this guy six hours twenty-one minutes ago. There was no paint on him. We are using our oils here, and now he uh, looks a little bit more like a painted guy. This is what we did on Saturday right here. It's from the same company here, RM Printed uh, Printable Terrain. So these are digital prints from some digital sculpts. And I do believe this was Monday's show right here. We painted this uh, Nocturna figure also with the oils. These have been really fun because, yeah, they're they're large, but they have lots of fun little things going on. Lots of fun little things going on here. It does mean there's there's some stuff to balance. There is there's some balancing acts to be done, because you want the interest to remain on the face, right? You don't want it to be. I'm gonna be looking so much down here at this little pouch and these little rocks that are 
on his legs here, but we still have to make sure there's something interesting to look at there. Should somebody take a shine to looking at these things? And I might even take a little bit of my dark here. Yeah. Sort of reinforce some of the texture that is already in here. We should do that. And that we're just using that same indigo, that combination of indigo and the not the asphaltum because that ironically enough that kind of creates a greenish color. But the indigo and the Van Dyke Brown because the Van Dyke Brown just so neutral. That the neutral aspect of the Van Dyke Brown really important. Really important. Let's throw a little bit more light here. And then up that that face right there and this these two those two faces right up there. It's kind of a grayish green that we're using. Again, a light touch on the brush. And then here, so th again, these are the adjustments that we start to make when we get into this phase. There's another adjustment here. Uh, oh yeah, another adjustment over here. There's no mistakes, just some adjustments. And I, I am glad we have that sort of almost like a muted magenta color in a couple of places here. Hey, Miss Jenny, how are you doing? Welcome in. Happy Tuesday morning. I hope that all is well with you. We've just been having an awful lot of fun with yet another one of these massive, uh, gigantic trolls here from RM Printable Terrain. And yes, they also do terrain because this is what we're going to be using for some of those Lord of the Rings games here. So let's uh, show you what the Easterlings look like on that terrain. And I think they will probably be, uh, probably Easterlings versus Rohan might be some of the first little test battles that we do. But I just absolutely love this. It's kind of a Ruins of Arnor type of a look there. Ah, oh, Miss Jenny is having some fun on a Kingdom Death miniature. I've only ever gotten a chance to paint one of those. Eight years ago. <laughs> uh, that Another one is here. Uh, it, was, it was sent as a kind of a commission thing because they knew that I just never get a chance to paint those. So they did send one. Looking forward to that. So I am very envious of you being able to uh, paint some Kingdom Death. Now, is it one of the large monsters, or what's the Kingdom Death monster, or is it one of the pinups? That's what they call them, right? The Twilight pinups or something like that? I have not had a chance to paint any of those. Uh, I think this that's what one of these is. The one that was sent was one of the Twilight pinups. So that would be fun, and painting it in oils will be extra fun. So maybe it's a good thing we never get a chance to really paint any Kingdom Death. Because now I have oils to paint it with. So sometimes you just got to wait. All right, now with this boy, that pouch over there. You know what? I'm going to go the other way with this. I'm going to just throw some darks into here. When in doubt, just add some darks, and boom, that's what I needed. I needed actually more darks in here. Not trying to make things lighter. Funny how that kind of goes. Speaking of a little bit lighter, we should, we should have some kind of reflective light over here. Uh, it's a, so one of the almost like a pinup. It's the Bullet Dancer specifically. Yeah, because I well, let's see the the pinups. Those tend to be in some ways more like a 54 mil scale, and then the Kingdom Death Monster stuff. 
I think it's pretty much 28 mil scale as far as the ah there we go yes we needed that reflected light there what about on this side should it be light I'm just gonna use that berry white green here yeah I think that makes a little more sense now if it's gonna be that thick of a shape better put something on there some kind of color Now, uh, did you uh, do any kind of a, a special basing for it or anything like that to kind of uh, push the theme even more? I've got to figure out uh, what sort of a basing I would want to do for the figure that I have. But I'm really glad I now I put that texture in here. That was just a little bit of stippling, right? Because these areas really start to recede, even though they have almost the same shading in them. But because of the texture there, that just shows up a little bit more. It's like the light is glinting off of whatever there. Might even make the, the chest look a little bit more stony. Yeah, ish. Maybe. Once more, going to find myself a couple of the lighter edges here on his face, maybe. Boy, what about there on the forehead here? Just right there. I don't maybe give him a little bit more of a scowl. Little more of a scowl there. And as I look at the again the leather here, leather is so many colors besides just brown. In fact, it's it's uh, that might be like might be one of the colors that leather ends up being the least between the aging of it and everything else. But you know, you see enough colors that are called leather brown. Well, you start just thinking, oh yeah, all brown is just or all leather is just brown. No, it can be black, blue, purple, whatever. I mean, <laughs> you want to see leather of many colors? Just uh, check out Armored Wolf's Etsy page. Check out his Instagram. Then you'll find out how many different colors and textures leather can be. It never ceases to amaze me. I'll get sent pictures of, hey, yeah, yeah, check out this leather that I just got. Check out this uh, bolt of leather. It's like, holy smokes. So do yourself a favor and treat yourself to some Armored Wolf Etsy goodness. As uh, I think, oh yeah, we're going to do that thing where we've got the pink on the one side, the green on the other side of that rock. I think we'll do something like that. This right up here could just use a little something, something a little bit lighter. And we have that here, hopefully not too bright or too light. Might be just enough. And then we'll, we just took the paint out of our brush, just wiped it on a paper towel. That's all I did. Didn't use any cleaner or thinner or anything like that. Just wiped it off on a paper towel. Doing some stippling. I like a little bit of the stippling like we did up here. Doing that right down here because I'm thinking it's, it's relatively shadow free. So why not get that one area have a little bit of light in it? Now some of those they look a little bit less like stippling, a little bit just like blobs of paint. So we just we kind of dashed away at the edges of those just a smidge, right? And I might might think about a couple of. Do I want? Yes, I'm just gonna here on the edge of some of these rocks here. Again, I'm just trying to make sure we keep the rocks down here as similar to the rocks on him as we can because, I don't know, it, it makes sense. That matter, maybe he's made of these rocks or whatever. It would makes more sense. And I, again, I was really glad that the rocks on here, there's many different 
types and textures of rocks. Some are just very worn. Some have a little bit of a crispness to the edge of them. Most time when you see a stone gown, it's literally they just took the same stone brush and ZBrush or something like that and just put it, resized it, and then put it at a million different places. Here there was definitely a conscious effort to have variation in the rock texture. I don't think I've ever seen this much variation in rock texture before on a stone gallum.